what's going on y'all it's your favorite 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 auntie in the world your favorite auntie mo and we are back again for another episode review of love and hip-hop miami this is season three episode three trick or treats before we get into the review y'all if you have not done so just yet go ahead and subscribe to my channel what you waiting on at this point i'll be bringing y'all some good reviews and chat god hey before you leave let me know that you stopped by. Give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down and then hit the notification bell so you will know whenever I upload new content. Um, Y'all, I'm tired. I don't want to waste a whole lot of time on this review. So hopefully y'all are ready for this review because I'm ready to give it to you. So let's get right on up into right, it. So we are introduced to a new character by the name of Hood Brat, okay? She was born and raised out the Pork and Beans Projects in Florida. She one them hood bitches. Trina went rolled up on her and her video shoot she doing. She, you know, doing her little rap. I I hate hoes and these hoes hate me. Ah, I was like, oh, she good and ratchet. I like her. Of course, Trina wants her to be a part of her all-female tour that she is putting on. Y'all, have we established yet where are they going on tour? Are they just going around Florida? They going around different, are they going doing a gator tour, going to gator parks? Are they going to colleges? Where are they going to? Are they going to different cities and states? Are they coming to Texas? You know, I'm, I might need to know these things, you know what I'm saying? Not that I will go to the concert, I just want to know. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Shot the shit out on my Instagram. You know what I'm saying? You know, it is what it is. She got a whole lot of respect for Trina because she know Trina is an OG in the game. And, you know, she's paved the way for, for a lot of the hood rat bitches such as herself to come out there and, you know, do her little rap fizzle and all of that. And plus, she's been knowing Trina and Trick Daddy for a very long time. She says she's always looked up to them when she was a little shorty. Do I pop pop back in the day, you know, with future hood rat shit on her mind. You know what I'm saying? She's always looked up to Trina. Now we get a little bit of background on hood brats. I kept calling the girl hood rat, but it's hood brat. Okay. Now she, um, she's a hustler. She's been doing her rap thing for a long time. Um, a local rapper or a rapper or whatnot. She is raising her kids, um, because she said her sister was, you know, battling different demons or whatnot. And so she decided to take her own life. And so therefore she has stepped in and played the role of mama to her sister's kids. And, um, Trina respects her, you know, they kind of share a moment because, you know, she was giving her condolences to Trina for her, you know, on the passing of her mother. And so Trina was just basically showing her some love and some respect saying that, you know what I'm she respects her hustle and her grind because Trina didn't know that she had all that going on. Like you raising kids and, and you're a bartender and you do nails and babysit kids. Like she got a lot of hood shit going on, but she's keeping her head above water. She out here hustling and she, you know, she's doing her thug fizz or whatever, right? So, um, Trina tells her that she wants her to go on tour, like I said, the little female, female tour, and she asked Trina who are some other girls that she wants to go on tour with her, um, as well, right? And so, um, Trina says that Trick wanted his little girlfriend, um... Nikki Natural to go. She did tell her that Suki is is in the bag for show. We all know Suki Hana ass is in there, bitch. She is pure fucking entertainment. Okay, so she said that um she at first she was you know cool with Nikki Natural or whatever, but she got a little slick ass mouth, and if she want to work with the Queen of Miami, she gonna have to calm all that shit down or whatnot. But um. What the girl, the hood brat girl say, huh, Nikki Nashville got a little song together or whatnot. She don't really know her, know her, they cool. But, you know what I'm saying, they not like besties or no shit like that. So, um, Trina's just like, you know, if, if little bitch get her shit together, you know, she might have could have had something. But, you know, she too slick at the mouth, make you want to backhand her ass. So, therefore, unfortunately, she ain't going to be able to go on this tour. So, we got Briscoe going on a date with Joy, right? Briscoe has really been feeling Joy, you know what I'm saying? He said he been feeling Joy since before he got locked up, but Joy was trick old lady. And now her and Trick is going through, I mean, her and, um, yeah, Trick are going through a divorce. So now she's up for grabs, you know, hopefully it ain't going to be no situation or whatever, right? They sitting down, they chopping it up. It's a cute little fancy dinner or whatever. And so Briscoe asked Joy, how would Trick feel, you know, would you have some questions to answer if he knew that she was out here on a date with me right now? She's like, look here, Trick got his own Trick shit going on. You know what I'm saying? He got this little trick-ass girl, Nikki Natural, that's his little girlfriend or whatever. So he don't need to be worried about what the hell I'm doing. Briscoe, like, who the fuck you said it is? You said Nikki Natural. She's like, yeah, why? You know her? He was like, yeah, you know, we used to, we, you know what I'm saying? We, we kicked it. You know, we, we, we hung out, you know, played charades or whatever a couple times. And she was like, nigga, what the fuck you mean by that y'all hung out or whatever? He didn't say no, but basically Joy was insinuating, so when y'all hung out, was y'all like, you know, like, was she like, or was she like doing stuff like that hanging out, or were y'all like, you know, 
Uno, was that kind of hanging out? Like, what the hell kind of hanging out y'all doing? I'm trying to get a better understanding of what the hell it is that you're talking about. Because, you know, that's trick old lady. And how long ago did this happen? He said this was a few weeks ago. They just hung out. He didn't say no. But Joy was damn sure insinuating that maybe you did have some shit going on. You know what I'm saying? So, um... I was like, huh? So later on, um, Joy ends up going over to Trick's house because he called her over there and said it's something that he wanted to talk about, right? Chai, as soon as he get over there, you know, of course, he asked her, does she want something to eat? This nigga Trick always got some fucking food. That's why his... He all... <sighs> Trick, slow down. Take care of yourself, player. But um, he didn't tell her ass that the reason why he invited her over there is because Nikki Natural feels like it's a problem that Joy has with her. And so he feels like the only way she can address whatever problem that she got with Joy is if Joy is there. So he invited Joy over there basically to kind of sort of ambush her. Like, look here, this little bitch got a problem with you. You know what I'm saying? She always hollering this Team Joy shit. I'm just trying to figure out what the hell the problem is. Now... Nikki's whole thing is she felt like she was set up at the whole, you know, audition because she was put on the spot to rap battle. You know, she was too scared to rap battle. She said she's not a rap battleist. You know what I'm saying? She just spit a couple bars or whatever. But how could you not show up to a place that you auditioning to be a part of and not have some extra shit, extra ammo in your pocket? Oh, yeah. Is that the only rap you had? Or... Like, really? That's your own damn fault that she was put on the spot like that and you had nothing else to come back with and come back with that bitch saying to you. I'm just saying, I'm not no rap battleist my damn self and I don't proclaim to be, but I know if I'm going to go to a rap audition, bitch, I'm going to have about two, three, four rhymes to TTG so I can dance, monkey dance if I need to. Try so they end up going back and forth, yada, yada, yada. Um, Trick tells her, you know, you need to stop playing the victim because you always hollering about this and the other and Team Joy and now allowed to get me. And she starts going back and forth with Trick saying that y'all not about to play me. It was just really silly because she wasn't listening to the girl. I I'm sorry, but I'm not. I'm not a Nicki Natural fan. I'm not. I was I was ready for that whole scene to be over with y'all. They going back and forth. Um. Then Joy is like, well, word on the curb, long story short, word on the curb is you done messed around with Briscoe a couple weeks ago, but you hollering, you sell a bit or selling a bit, whatever you want to say over here with Trick Daddy Dollars. So what it is, what it look like, you know what I'm saying? What's really popping? Chai Nikki claims nothing never happened. She starts getting pissed off. She calls him George and Florida Evans or George and Wheezy, whatever, Chai. Trick gets pissed off, kicks the bitch out of his house, tells the girl... <laughs> Get your shit and go. Get your little pink wig, your little plastic onesie, and get your little ass on up out of here. Child kicks her out the house. Then you got Joy in the back co-sign, and that's right, Trick, get out the fucking house. Joy over there like, my name's still on the deed. It's still on the house, bitch. Bye, get your ass out the house. Nikki say, bitch, it ain't your house. It ain't Trick house. It's the bank house. That shit was funny as hell to me when they was going back and forth. I'm sorry. It was funny. It was good. Damn, no, it was funny. Afterwards, Trick sits down, and him and Joy continue to eat their pot pie or whatever it was that they was eating. It looked like a pot pie or a uh, shepherd's pie, something like that they was eating. I was like, what kind of hood shit is this? Next up, you got this damn scene with Amada and her boyfriend, MJ. They sitting down uh, having a little romantical drinks or whatever in that big ugly ass bed. That bed looks scary to me. I wouldn't want to sleep in that bed. I feel like I'm waking up in a fucking Freddy Krueger goddamn dream or some shit. That bed looks scary to me. Looks expensive, but very fucking scary. So she starts talking about how the other night people kept thinking that she was pregnant at the event because she didn't want to drink. She was only drinking Sprite or whatever. MJ brings up the fact that he's ready to have kids. I'm just like, no, I want to have kids too, but um, I can't be having no nails right now because I want my lights to be, my name to be all on the billboards and people screaming my name. I need to get my Latin music award and I want everybody to say, I'm out of, I'm out of. Girl. MJ ready to have babies. Amada don't want to have no damn babies right now. They still sit in that ugly ass bed. She's still stressing over Julia. Don't know what the fuck to do. Moving on from that. So we got Trina and her goons riding up to meet up with Julian. Bitch, if that wasn't no mob scene right there, I don't know what the fuck was. Soon as Julian got out, he was like, look here, I just want to apologize off the rip. You know what I'm saying? But not getting in contact with you when your mom's passed away, you know. I apologize, but everything going on with me and you, you know what I'm saying? I just didn't feel like it was the right time. Bitch, dead that. 
you supposed to be cool with me, you know, above anything my mama meant more to me than you, then your ass would ever mean to me for any damn thing, and you couldn't reach out to me for my mama to have with you. Ain't no excuse from that. Moving on. What else is the issue? So Trina basically breaks it down to him what she's pissed off at him for. Nigga, you got this advancement for this money. You was supposed to have did this and this and this for my record. Producers ain't getting paid. Niggas want to get their money. They pull my record. Now I'm asked out. You got this money and you ain't did your part. So what the hell is the problem? Child, basically, he doesn't take ownership for anything. He's like, look here. I got this advancement. This was for me. This wasn't for your record. Which really, truthfully, honestly... It, technicality of it, yeah, you got that advancement on the strength of that was going towards Trina's album. Nigga, don't nobody know you. Don't nobody, ain't nobody just gonna give you money like Trina said. Ain't nobody, they didn't give you that money for Amada. They gave you that money off the strength that you was finna do something with my name for my goddamn album, not for you. He pulling out contracts and shit that he done probably got off of goddamn... <laughs> netbooks.com or some goddamn shit. Some shit that he done made up was like, look here, the money went to blah, 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 blah. Basically showing him in the contract that the money went to him. Look here, nigga, you still missing the principality of the whole damn thing. You got that money, which I think he probably thought that the record sales would make up for whatever money that was advanced towards him so he could just keep this money, put this shit in his back pocket, go out and buy whatever the fuck he got to buy, buy kids school supplies or whatever. And when she sells so many records, they make that 300K back that he can get that to her. No, nigga. No, nigga. No, nigga. You did her wrong. You did her dirty. Trina pissed off and she don't want to hear nothing. She like, we can dead this shit. Look here. I'm over it. If you ain't talking about putting my record back up like it's supposed to be or coming up off my monty, we ain't got nothing to talk about. And she ride out on his ass. And he sit there looking goddamn stupid, not knowing what to do. Y'all, we got my ratchet ass homegirl, Sukiana. <laughs> she coming walking through. Look like an outdoor Denny's fucking up these people early bird special dinner, getting that goddamn blood pressure and cholesterol and shit up. Walking past, and you got Chaotic out there recording her ass. She out there asking who wants some coochie? Anybody granddaddy looking to get screwed? <laughs> Sukiana is pure entertainment to me. Y'all know I love me some Ratchet Reality TV. I'm not, you know, the deep, deep gutter part of me is ratchet as fuck. That's why when to see it on TV, that gets to bring out my inner ratchetness. I'm not quite a Sukihana ratchet, but oh, <laughs> I love me some ratchet shit, y'all. I'm sorry. I love me some old ratchet ass shit. And that is Sukihana. She gives it to me all the way real. Y'all, huh, chaotic. Like I said, just fucking up these people goddamn early bird special dinner. Miami uh, Miami Tip comes and she sits down and she talks with Sookie. She tells Kay how to look at nigga. Take your goddamn wild ass on somewhere so I can holler at my girl Sookie real quick because you ain't going to do nothing but fuck up this whole goddamn serious tip that I'm trying to be on or whatever, right? So Miami Tip wants to be Sookie's manager. She wants to basically, you know, shape her, mold her, help her so that she doesn't get screwed over in the music industry like she got screwed over. Y'all know Sookie Hani is a rapper. Put, bitch, put the dick all in your throat. That's the song that she got out there. She need a henny and a plan B. Y'all, I didn't. I never in my life, aside from Kaya, my neck, my back, I never in my life thought I would hear a song more ratchet and more hood than Henny and Plan B. Nigga, what? Y'all, we got this next scene uh, with Jocelyn. She at the studio throwing that ass back on her boyfriend, Ballistic. It wasn't really a whole lot that happened with that. She was talking about how, you know, she's in a better place and hopefully don't no drama follow her out there to Miami, but she going to run into, baby, she called Prima Donna, what does she call her? Pre-$10? Girl, I about passed the fuck out when she called that whole pre-$10, baby. That was it. Point blank periods for me. Y'all, afterwards, we got Nikki Natural. She goes to the bar to see Hood Brat. Hood Brat is up in there doing one of her 50 lemon jobs. She's probably Nigerian or Haitian. Cause, and listen, don't nobody get offended when I say that because I got them in my family. But y'all niggas got like 50 lemon jobs. And that's before noon, like a motherfucker. Y'all come out straight walking out the coochie, out the room, out the hospital to your first goddamn 10-hour shift job. And, and you work 40 hours a day, goddammit. I ain't telling you what I heard. I'm telling you what I know.
So Nikki Natural is telling Hood Brad about it, the whole situation that happened over there at Trick House, how she got into it with Joy and how Trick kicked her ass up at the house. And so she she and her feelings, you know, she hurt now. So um, Hood Brad is telling her that she got invited to, um, what's that boy's name? We was just talking about him. I really forgot his name, Briscoe. <laughs> Briscoe's having a coming home party and so she tell her look here you need to go ahead and go into the little party or whatever and check this thing and see like you know I heard she was out here telling people that we mashed and we smashed and we bumped and grinded and all of that nigga that ain't true what the what why is you saying that so she's like yeah you know I'm gonna go ahead slide up in there I'm gonna check that nigga whatever now she also tells Hood Brad that Trick is mad cause she ain't giving up no ill nine nine to him right now Hood Brad was like girl that's your man you should be wanting to give up some nookie to your man like what is you doing and that's the thing that that for that solidified let me know right there you ain't really with trick for trick you would trick to see what trick can do for your trick ass that's what you with his ass for because other than that child you ain't feeling him like that that's like ass bucky how that go you know she played for what two seasons with flavor of love child Come on now. She trying to get her flavor of love come up. Come on now. It's the night of ballistics coming home party. We got Joy chopping it up with Prima Donna. Prima Donna, she said she got waist trainers, vitamins, crock pots, seasonings, baby carriages, uh, stun guns, brass knuckles, weave. She got beans, greens, potatoes, tomatoes, chicken, ham, turkey. You name it. She got it all. Whatever you need. Prima Donna got it. So we got the girls sitting down. We got Prima Donna sitting down with Joy Hoodbrat, Sukiana, and some other chick. I done missed that chick's name all the way. I thought I had wrote it down. The chick sings a song twerking for Jesus. Now, y'all, y'all know I love me some hood shit now. I ain't never heard no twerking for Jesus now. Um, I don't, I don't know if we supposed to play with, with the Lord like that. But, you know, hey, she say Jesus tip better than any of these trick niggas out here. And you know what? That's a word right there. I don't give a damn what nobody say. Don't nobody tip for you like the Lord. Don't get me started. The Lord will make it rain blessings <laughs> upon that ass that you ain't even. Lord, help me. Let me stop y'all. I'm not even finna sit up here and play with God like that. But she say twerk for Jesus. I said, okay, y'all already know how I do. All right. Ahmad and her dude was like, rip? Oh, hell no. Um, we finna go ahead and go on here to this bar, get us some sparkling water on the rocks. Baby, come on. Come, I, I can't handle you over here with this shit. Come on now. Come on. So Joy is sitting down talking to Briscoe, child. She like, look here, a whole lot, a whole lot of happened since the last time I talked to you. Man, you need to talk, look here, this is what happened. Soon as they finna sit down and get ready to talk, here you got Nikki Natural come walking her ass up. And she go up to Briscoe, she like, are we finna do this right here in front of everybody? Briscoe like, nigga, what you talking about? I don't even know what's good, what's up? She was like, okay, well, fine, fucking thing. You sitting up here telling everybody, man, you messed around. He was like... So you sit up here and you tell everybody that me and you mess around. We didn't have sex, right? We didn't have sex, right? I mean, right. We we didn't have sex. You're you're absolutely right, child. I ain't believe none of it. I ain't believe it. No, mm 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 mm. Cause see, look here. Briscoe is a real nigga. A real nigga, unless you trying to diss his ass, like, uh, he a weak, he a sorry ass nigga, da, 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 he the front of the ass. But see, a real nigga, he can tell when you trying to cover your own ass, so I'm finna help you cover your own ass, but me and you both know that you was backing that thing up. But you know, hey, I'm gonna say whatever I need to say to appease you for whatever situation you got going on right now. Yup, she sure right. She sure right. Briscoe, nigga. Auntie seen straight through that shit. She was lying. So then she turns and looks at Joy and it's like, um, Joy, so you said he had said this like, what's up? Joy asked, well, what had happened was I had insinuated that y'all had slept together and you didn't say no. You didn't say yes, but you didn't say no, right? He like, look here. Hey, whatever she say. Whatever she say. I said, this nigga Briscoe lie like a motherfucker. So, girl, here you got Joy was like, well, look at what happened was my bad. Maybe I had misunderstood my bad, though. I apologize. 
You know what I'm saying? I wasn't trying to start a pot, nothing like that. I thought I just heard what I thought I heard. My bad, though. Who y'all. I'm not even finna go into detail on this next scene. We got Amada and Shay. Shay coming up to Amada with her old crybaby ass. Crying because she think Amada done made up and she friends with JoJo. If you friends with her, I'm not going to be friends with you. You trying to be friends with her. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. You trying to be my sister. You not my sister. You are. I don't fuck with you. You because you friends with her. Shay, bitch, look. I'm damn near 40. You damn near my age. Who gives a shit? What is we doing? You done been on TV too long for this Shay. Too long for this Shay. For you to sit up here and be crying about who friends with who over what? Girl, Bucket. Bucket? You want Bucket? I'm not going to do it. Afterwards, Julian goes and he sits down and he's talking with Amada, right? He's like, look here, I just want to let you know I just hollered at Trina. The whole situation is this. That, you know, this is what it is. Feel free to ask me whatever you want to ask me, right? They get ready to talk. Just then, her boyfriend, MJ, comes up and he comes and sits down. It's like, look here, baby. I know that you, you know, you don't want to stir no pots. You don't want to ruffle no feathers. So it's a lot of stuff that you don't want to say. So I'm going to say it. So how about you going over there, have your little drink, and I feel a holla at home, boy, right? Now, Amada's kind of hesitant. Amada kind of like, oh, I don't know about this. I don't think you need to be doing this. Like, this doesn't seem right. I don't like it. He like, look here, mommy, I got it, all right? I got it. So, Amada goes over to the side. She's sitting down somewhere, girl. Prima Donna sits over there, and she's talking with her, right? Prima Donna with her, look. Prima Donna is so ghetto. <laughs> if you listen to her talk, she is so fucking ghetto. And I love it. I love it. So, MJ starts to tell them, uh, Julian, that he doesn't, basically, he doesn't like this, and I'm going to watch out for this, and, and I, whatever's affecting her is going to affect our relationship, and I want to get married, and I want to have kids eventually one day. Bitch, this motherfucker, Julian, going to say, oh, yeah, about kids. I told her, absolutely not. That's not going to happen. Nigga, what? What? Who the fuck is you to say? She can't have kids and she can't do this, girl. Now, the both of them was a little bit out of line because MJ, look here. That's my girl and you going to do and I got a right to dictate the this and the this and the do, do, do. And if I say the do, 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 look here. Both y'all niggas is some scammers. Y'all just scamming her in two different goddamn ways. I'm just going to call it a spade a goddamn spade. Now, look here, MJ, you scamming ass nigga your damn self. You sure got a lot of foot to put down with no W-2s to back that up. Where you work at? What you do? And Julian, nigga, everybody know you scam. So, for you to try to have a dictation over something, and then Amada, Paul little chihuahua, Amada, she's just in the middle. She doesn't know what to say because she doesn't want to hurt anybody's feelings. So, Julian and MJ going back and forth. Y'all, they get up in each other's face. Goddamn Julian mad. MJ mad with his little leather beaded jacket with the hat to match on. He letting him know he the man. Y'all, they going back and forth in each other. Meanwhile, Amada over here fucking dying. Mommy about to pass out. Mommy can't breathe. She don't know where she is. Oh, my God. I feel so sick. I feel so... Oh, my God. Y'all, the episode end from now. Amada dying in the corner. And these niggas over here arguing with leather jackets on. Y'all, I can't make this shit up. The episode ended from there. I'm tired. I'm finna take my ass to bed. <laughs> Y'all already know if there was anything that I missed, drop it down below and let me know. Please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share. And I'm Timo. We'll see y'all in the next video. Peace out. I'm finna hold up one finger. Bye. <laughs> What's going on, y'all? Look here. If you like this video, do me a favor. Give me a thumbs up. Share this video. Comment on this video. All of that good stuff. And if ain't nobody else told you today, I sure enough love you and I sure enough appreciate you.